Welcome to Charts This Week. Wow, what a week we've got ahead with all the turmoil we're seeing in tax in Libya, the Middle East, and really still Japan, a lot of uncertainty still there. So global events really taking over. But, you know, the interesting thing is that the long-term charts have been telling us for some time that, you know, we are in this uncertain period. We have been for really 10 years. We had certainty in the 80s, certainty in the 90s, and this is the U.S. stock market. We see we really have just had this big congestion and and that means you know when we are on this uptrend it's really hard to say that you know we can feel the trend the same way we would when when you know it's a very clear long term uptrend so we've had this uncertainty and that does mean that it will play on us for some time until we break out so equity markets do still face long term turmoil and we see here really that the the six, uh, the cloud here for the monthly chart has created some resistance it just came slightly outside on the S&P but right now long term we'd expect to come back and really be stuck in this cloud on the lagging line through on the price but we were through below on the price here previously but not the lagging line really this does suggest a little bit of a barrier to the market rising higher at the moment so the long term picture has been a bit questionable anyway and if we look at the daily and weekly clouds on the S&P 500 we saw the buy signal back at the low in 2009 we had a little bit of congestion in 2010, but the long-term picture was, was in place. We've really tested the base of the cloud this week. We came right back to the base of cloud. 12.49 is the, is the base of the cloud on the price at the moment, and that's exactly where the market touched the clouds. So at 12.49, the cloud provided support. And then, really, if we fall lower than this, we'd be looking back to about 1,100 points on the longer-term cloud. This is the weekly cloud for support. So a new low on the S&P takes us to the base of the weekly cloud. So that's one thing to really watch. And if we look at the week, uh, the 60 minute chart we saw that this trend was really just going on and on and on couldn't really keep going it was just um, it was unsustainable for more than three months this is an unusually long time for the 60 minute chart to stay in trend without coming back through and then going on so really really extended trend on the on the sh very short on the short term chart and then we saw here how we broke through and we were saying really now three four weeks ago really at the end of February we were saying that the market was through on this cloud was starting to look bearish this was before events were occurring in Japan and before really the Middle East got going a few weeks ago we were saying this this really was starting to look bearish for the market and so we are in this place now where the um, the clouds uh, the weekly the, the 60 minute cloud is weighing heavily on the price interesting we've got the daily cloud here this is the point where we touch 1249 so let's say 1250 this is the place where now the battle begins between short term and medium term will the medium trend hold and do we cross back above the cloud or will the short term trend wind and we get forced below the medium term um, chart so really quite critical to watch how this 60 minute chart this hourly chart develops this week if we look at the 10 by 3 chart, we see the downside targets. We saw the downside targets in 19, uh, 2008 were given and met, 2007 given and met. Then we had the upside targets again given and met. This target of 1270 was given in 2009, was met just recently. We even got another 1300 target, which we slightly exceeded, which is bullish action. But we've now got this new downside target of 1100, which matches our cloud base. So uh, if we go lower than... Uh, than uh, 1250 we do have downside targets potentially to 1100 so quite a, a big sell-off taking us back to this congestion area that we saw previously but for that to happen we need to go higher then lower to activate that target so still quite a lot of price action has to occur and we see on the 5 by 3 chart that in fact we have had that price action where we've had the little move up we now would need to go back below this 1250 mark to activate a target of 1120 so we are seeing some downside targets kicking in at around 1120 quite quite significantly lower than where we are so really quite key this is the one percent chart this is a um, one percent by three this is the box size is actually one percent and varies all the way up the chart and we did have this target of 1344.85 
1385 wasn't quite met. So the key thing is really that we don't have a lot of upside to play for. We need new buying thrusts to give us that. So it's really hard to call the markets or see the market making new highs in the medium term without some new buying thrusts giving us targets. And so that's what we rely on. And if we look at the one minute ch chart, this chart was predicting 1250. These targets off these columns were down to 1250. I've just got my chart configured to show the last five. And here we see 1255 was given last week, given and met. Then we had a new upside thrust, 1299, 1288, given and met. Now we've got a downside of 1270. The one minute chart, remember, is going to change as the price changes. So really quite critical that. And then if we look at the um, S&P 500 index, this is um, calculated on US data. This is the S&P 500 companies, a bullish percent. You could easily do this in your updater system on the FTSE 100, the all share index to do your own bullish percent. Quite easy to do. And we see here how stocks have been selling off. First of all, we noticed the divergence where the market was going higher, but the bullish percent was actually starting to tail off and go lower. So this was started to become suspect, these new highs. And we've seen in the last two, two or three weeks, we've seen around 40% of stocks give sell signals in the US. So about 40% of stocks have given sell signals on their point and figure charts, which probably projects lower price points on those sell signals, there's lower targets. So it suggests that this probably still has potentially further to go based on the bullish percent. So we've got to keep a close eye on all of these things and keep them considered. And then if we look at the Dow, we had a target of 12,400, which was given and met with the sell off on the Dow. No downside targets yet or upside targets here. So the Dow, again, hard to see any new upside. Of course, the 60 minute chart on the Dow, if you're trading the Dow intraday, short term spread betting or whatever, this 60 minute chart should be your roadmap for how you trade. You should be taking long positions when you're with an uptrend, and you should be looking for short positions when you're in a downtrend. You trade with the trend. And so at the moment, we do have this this downtrend hanging over us and really quite key. So very similar um, picture to the S&P. And if we look at the one minute targets, these are fantastic for trading the Dow. And at the moment, of course, we need to see the, the, the market opening, new thrusts coming in to give us a bit of a picture as to whether we see more upside targets or more downside targets. We closed on Friday with a little bit of uncertainty on the, on the market short term. Look at the NASDAQ, we see this 38.2% retracement really weighing heavily on the NASDAQ. We have seen considerable outperformance in the last few years, so tech has been the place to be, but it is stumbling at the moment. Like so many other markets, NASDAQ has, has really sort of hit the, hit the buffers at the moment. We see the downside targets were given and met, upside targets 21.40, 22.20, given and exceeded, and we broke this high. So more bullish than, than many other markets. But of course, the long term picture of NASDAQ is very, very different. But at the moment, hard to see any upside because we don't have any new buying thrusts. If we look at the FTSE, we come to Europe now, we look at the FTSE, we had on, the, on the weekly chart, this is where we're in the bearish zone. So long term, we were bearish below 2007, 2008. This was the time when the markets were looking bad. We crossed on the weekly, we're in a long term bull phase. But it doesn't mean that we can't have a short term retracement all the way back to the long term trend. So we need to be aware of that. You need to think about your time horizon. 6,500 is the upside target on the 50 by 3. This will give us a downside. But at the moment, we have a long term trend, but we can come back in price to meet the base of that trend. And if we look at the 25 by 3, this is the smaller box size. This is a more sensitive chart. Upside targets of 7,000 and 6,900 clustering at the upside there. Note the way that the 6,010, 6,100 chart given at 5.2 was met. But we did have this little downside target given off the top, 5.625 was slightly exceeded. We do have a new big thrust here, 4,800 on FTSE. But for that to happen, we need a new closing low. So really quite key is that the FTSE has to close lower to activate that target. And of course, the seasonality tells us we're heading into the period where we, this is the, the map of a chart over a year for FTSE. So generally FTSE goes over the last 10 years, this is the average way the FTSE has behaved. And we see that sell in May and go away. It did work last year, didn't work the year before. Will it be the year that we actually start to see it? Notice how we've fallen through the cloud on the daily chart. We haven't done that on the S&P, but we've fallen through the cloud both on the price and the lagging line, so that isn't good for FTSE. And if we then look at the 60 minute chart, again, the picture here is we're bearish, we need a cross of the cloud to be bullish. 
these charts change very, very quickly when we're thinking short term, so you need to watch these virtually in real time. The one minute chart, of course, you do need to watch in real time. If you're trading FTSE, FTSE futures, spread betting the FTSE, these one minute targets are absolutely fantastic. And here we see two thrust targets that we were given on Friday. So we've got a little bit to play for, new downside target. Watch Monday's opening for new price action to give us um, the, the price targets there. The Nikkei, so much news in Japan, tragic state of affairs. But if we look just at the, the market interpretation, earlier this year we had a downside thrust target to 5,900 and a new downside target um, really the reaction to, to the earthquake and resulting tsunami um, at 4,500. A lot of fear of, of course it built into this market with all the events that are going on there. It's a very tough time. And then if we look at uh, some markets that don't look so bad, this is the, the um, BSC Sensex, the Indian stock market. It's massively outperformed, outperformed by 400% over the last 10 years. Basing pattern, really testing new all-time highs, really quite key, this basing action. Push shift T on your system and you'll get the upside and t downside targets for, the, for that chart. Same on this one, this is Brazil, another chart market that's looking quite good. It's testing its daily cloud at the moment, but really it, it is looking um, in an uptrend. It's outperformed even more than the uh, Sensex versus the World Index, so these markets uh, are looking good. So emer some emerging markets still look okay and they're not all falling away in the sell-off. We just take a quick look at sterling. This is the sterling chart against the dollar. Again, this is basing, dollar weakness, sterling strength. Euro's probably looking a little bit stronger against the dollar than sterling, but really what's interesting here is that we're, we have been testing new 12-month highs. Um, so really sterling is looking like it will break to the upside against the dollar based on this chart. And if we look at the euro sterling chart, this one's really been quite hard to call. We've had this big congestion ranges that we get in euro sterling when not much happens and then we get a re-rating. This is where we saw sterling weakness and euro strength. Now we've got this big sideways pattern. We're starting to test and break higher. I'd want to see that little high there um, set in 2010 really broken at around 85, um, sorry about the 88, 70, 89 mark. We want to see that level um, broken. But at the moment uh, it's a bit hard to call whether we're going to see sterling fall against the euro again, but the chart's not looking great. But these sideways triangles, it can go either way, so it's a bit hard to call. And then if we look at gold, um, you know, with all the things that are happening, war and all of these things, it's, it's you know, very susceptible to big moves. But the uptrend has been there. We've had these thrusts here in place already on gold. This is, you know, we're above the cloud. We've had only a, a couple of intraday breaches, which we wouldn't normally count, where we have one or two days below the cloud. We want to see a, a good few days really to be calling a sell on the lagging line. And we are, again, nudging all time highs two weeks ago. This is still looking pretty bullish and we'd expect to the upside. And of course on your system you can just press the shift T key. If you hold the shift key down and press T you will get the targets. And in fact if we just do that, um, there we are. We get the, the trends and the targets. Um, 1800 is the long term target, that was the buying thrust. Notice how these targets were given and met. 1650 is the new target, that needs the new high to activate it. The 1800 one is activated. So there are some quite big upside targets on gold, but you always need to be a little bit careful, keep an eye on all the different time frames. It will depend on your time horizon. That's it for this week. I'm always happy to cover any charts you like. Just email me and I'll do my best. Until next week, happy charting. See you then.